Hi, uh, my name is William Ball. I'm a PhD student from Edinburgh Napier University, and I'm going to be talking today about health inequalities in British nurses. So, why would we look at health inequalities? Um, they've been a pretty crucial issue for a number of years, a big challenge to most countries in the world. Um, I would characterize inequalities in this case as being differences in health which are avoidable or unjust or unfair. Um, something that we can do something about if we choose to do so. Um, obviously, health health has been improving uh, over time for uh, probably the last century or so in most countries. Uh, here in England, well, England and the United Kingdom, we've seen increases in life expectancy uh, from the 1980s onwards, uh, although that is beginning to stall. One of the reasons uh, potentially for that is that the improved level of improvement it's unequally distributed across the population. So when, particularly when looking at deprivation, other socioeconomic factors, those living in the least deprived areas are seeing the biggest increases in health. Um, and the, those living in the most deprived groups are seeing the smallest increases or even um, reductions in life expectancy, as you can see in the chart on the bottom right. So it's a big challenge to um, governments. It's also timely that um, during the current pandemic, socioeconomic factors have been highlighted as something which is exacerbating uh, the burden and some would say unfair burden on certain um, proportion, proportions of the population. And so we've known about these differences for a number of years, um, going back quite a long time, uh, lots of government reports in the United Kingdom in particular, um, in the 1980s onwards, um, but it doesn't seem to be making a difference in the in terms of the policy uh, addressing those. So we need to move beyond simply observing these trends and uh, actually addressing them. One of the key um, geographical differences in the United Kingdom uh, that's been observed again probably since the 1980s is um, worse health in Scotland compared to England. So what's commonly known as the excess mortality issue. So you can see from the charts here that um, from the 1980s onwards we've seen a, an increased um, level of mortality rates relative to England in Scotland and that's after adjusting for age and sex differences but also after adjusting for deprivation in uh, differences. And you can see over time this difference is growing, increasing, Scotland's health is getting worse. So, uh, different trajectory from the rest of the United Kingdom, largely due to slower improvements in health. And it's particularly marked for those of uh, working age methods available to us um, for conducting analysis, understanding uh, kind of what's, what's at play, what we can do to change this. So I'm using uh, individual level data from the national censuses, which are uh, part of the linkage studies, the ONS uh, longitudinal study, the Scottish longitudinal study. Uh, um, samples of the uh, national census responses and they're for each of the separate countries um, and this data is held securely because it's so detailed, um, it needs to be held securely and only accessed by approved researchers. Um, so it can't actually be joined together, which is um, one of the issues that this, the methods in this study kind of addresses. So as I mentioned, um, the, the way that we've kind of gotten around not being able to join these this raw data is by using a, a method developed in the Scottish longitudinal study called eDataShield, um, whereby um, regression outputs, intermediate regression outputs are passed uh, outside of their safe settings. It's none of the raw data goes, but um, iterations of this regression analysis go to a third uh, analysis computer, which can simulate uh, the regression analysis as if all of the raw data was put together in one place. Another problem with this cross-national analysis is um, identifying a consistent measure of deprivation. So uh, as I mentioned, the Carstairs index earlier, for, uh, which was used from the 1980s, is explaining less of the difference between England and Scotland over time. And uh, one of the suggestions for that is that these are quite simple 
indices based on a very small number of factors. And that perhaps um, as time goes on, that they're reflecting less and less of the lived experience of deprivation. So another source of small area deprivation measures that we have are the IMDs, which is uh, indices of multiple deprivation. They take a large number of indicators and factors um, and they rank very small areas um, based on their deprivation scores overall. But the, the problem with that is that the constituent IMDs for England, Scotland and Wales are measured slightly differently and they're done uh, as a result they're on a different separate scale so they can't be analysed um, together as if it was one scale. But there's a, a method has been developed to adjust these measure, these IMDs um, using some similar to, similarly measured uh, indicators uh, which results in the UK IMD which have got um, kind of visual mapped representation of the UK wide deprivation measures here on the on the right hand side. You might be wondering why uh, why I'm looking at nurses in particular. In a similar vein to the uh, Michael Barnett's Whitehall studies, we're looking at a relatively less deprived group. Nurses are kind of intuitively you'd think would have um, potentially protective characteristics. So they act as a kind of counterfactual position. What if the the rest of the population had a similar had similar characteristics to nurses? So as you can see at the top left here, we've got um, this comes from the highest level of um, education measure from the census. And nurses are relatively much more homogenous in this and they have uh, the highest level of um, this particular measure. Around 90% have uh, a degree or professional registration compared to just 30% of the general population. Nurses also much more homogenous in terms of sex, uh, around 90% of nurses are female, it's about 50 obviously for non-nurses. Um, other socioeconomic factors like home ownership, nurses are much more likely to own their own home. And they're also uh, skew slightly older. Nurses, as you can see here, um, on the self-rated health scale, very good, good, fair, poor, very poor. Much more likely to respond that they have very good health or very good and good health. And nurses are also more likely to live in the least deprived areas, less likely to live in the most deprived areas. And what we see at the outcome of this is nurses report very good health at a higher rate in every level of deprivation than non-nurses. Um, but you can see for both groups, health inequalities remain. So some of the implications of this research uh, using these large linkage studies and the, the form of the longitudinal studies, uh, they provide a really rich source of information. Uh, they're also linkable to outside data sets. So the UK IMD, which I applied, was linked to individuals based on their area of residence. It's also been um, used with an alternative to linkage of, uh, kind of raw data by using this eData Shield process, which simulates uh, use it uh, as if this data is combined when it's in actual fact still in its raw format still within a secure setting and uh, I think that that's got a huge amount of potential to be um, applied to different contexts whether it's um, census data administrative data sources um, which could be used without necessarily having uh, data holders necessarily having to um, hand over large bits and pieces of um, sensitive information. It's also a very in interesting application of um, an area measure of deprivation to look at socioeconomic factors at an individual level. So you might be worried that there's an <coughs> ecological fallacy at play in applying an aggregate score such as the UK IMD uh, to an individual, but we've shown uh, through looking at the health of nurses who are a homogenous socioeconomic group at an individual level, there seems to be an effect of deprivation over and above that and that's um, backed up by previous research as well. And I think as uh, nurses being there as a counterfactual um, example, their health provides insights into wider inequalities. So the fact that um, they have higher levels of education and other protective factors, it does result in them having um, favor more favorable self-rated health 
um, at all levels of deprivation. But there still remains uh, inequalities within that group as well. So I just want to close by thanking the uh, SLS and the ONS LS staff for their help. Um, I'm not sure exactly how the questions will work on this platform, but if you'd like to get in touch, um, I'm sure there's a, a chat box or a message service, and you can also contact me at email here or via Twitter. So thank you for your time.